Thank you. Gonna be reading from Exterminator, Life After Marriage. Can you hold your book up? This is a beautiful book cover. Yeah. 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 this is two books in one. This is a big book. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's basically the same size as my others, yeah. just that the tray paperback size has uh, gotten uh, smaller. So okay. it looks like it's a lot more. Introduce us to the Exterminator. <laughs> Thank you. And I just want to say thank you, uh, Expressions Book Club, again for having us, having me. You have done an outstanding job, and I just really appreciate the opportunity, you know, to come and share with others. As Terminator, Life After Marriage is my third book, and my first three books were all pretty personal, um, or I wrote them for a personal reason. But anyway, As Terminator is, um, my main character's name is Sylvia St. James. And she is a little bitter because uh, the man who had rocked her world for the last 25 years comes to her one day and says, you know, look, he didn't want to be married anymore. And that's so that he could be with a former ex-wife. Oh, wow. I could write this story because it happened to me. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, before you ask me, I'm going to go tell you, okay? <laughs> but anyway, but still you say, James, you know, she, you know, she's about to take her life back. And she realizes, and what she realizes is that many of her friends are in the same predicament. And what she does is she forms a support group to help them to get over their emotional roller coaster. But this support group needs a support group because they got a lot of drama. <laughs> 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 uh, but they do realize what this friendship and what the group really comes to mean to them and the healing that they derive mm -hmm. from the book. Okay. So that's just a little over okay. overview. Second scene four. Okay. The scene, okay, there's five friends. Mona, Rachel, Sylvia, uh, Ashley. I actually have a Denise too. She's she's trouble in this book too. <laughs> but she's not part of the main group. And I threw in a man, a good man, Marvin. And I'm gonna tell you, I wrote him so good that if I could pull him out from the page, he would be my man. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, they're at their first meeting, and Sylvia St. James. She starts it out because she's the person who's organized this group. And so it's kind of like Alcoholic Anonymous, you know. <laughs> and so they kind of, you know, give them t tell why they came to the group, or, you know, kind of what happened that brought them to this particular point. So I'm just going to read just a little bit of Sylvia. And I will say it, it's, it might be a little bit of you, too. So this is Sylvia. And she has the crowd, like you're all looking, you know, her girlfriends around, they got a little popcorn and all that, you know, sitting <laughs> in the couch. <laughs> and we said, I woke up that morning in a peaceful trance tranquil mood. I remember the day so vividly. It was a couple of days before Valentine's Day. When I focused my eyes, I found him staring at me from the foot of the bed, like something was on his mind, but he didn't have the heart or the balls to tell me. I watched him as he continued to stare, then dropped his head and grabbed his chin as if the matter was too complex for even him to comprehend. I sat up and asked, what is it, Adonis? Why are you staring at me like this? Sad. Just thinking. The two long words fell out of his mouth as if someone had slapped him on the back and forced him out. I knew I was in trouble. I had seen the look before. But I, with all the education and the good sense God gave me to know from right, know right from wrong, good from evil, I had no earthly idea how much trouble I was really in. The kind of trouble that makes you go and grab a gun and kill somebody because if it wasn't for them, him, them, you wouldn't be in any kind of trouble. The kind of trouble that makes you curse out everybody and use the words you've never uttered in your life, and in the morning you can't remember a thing and wonder why in the world no one can stand your ass. <laughs> but Adonis didn't release his troubled mind that morning. He kept it bottled up and left my brain twisted in agony because I wasn't getting the clues he laid out for me. I would have done better playing Jeopardy. Y'all asleep? It's so quiet in here. No, Mona said, shaking her head in continuous motion. She, Rachel, Claudette, and Ashley sat glued to their seats. They had become transfixed, drawn into Sylvia's lifetime movie that played from the pages of her broken heart. Mona's pump pumps lay on the side, and her bare feet, bare toes, excuse me, I'm sorry. These aren't real good ass Walmart specials. <laughs> 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 anyway. Mama's pumps lay on their sides and her bare toes kneaded the carpet while the others laced their fingers together, ready to brace at the moment of discovery. 
Continue, Rachel encouraged. You might have to get me a blanket and a bowl of popcorn. I'm in the room with you, girl. I'm waiting for Adonis to drop the bomb on you. We're ready to dance on his ass because we know that the news is going to be bad. All right. The others nodded in agreement. So what happened? He said, I've got to go to work. And he headed, out, he headed out of the room without his usual goodbye kiss. I screamed, Adonis, come back here. Adonis, come back here. A few seconds later, his body framed the doorway. He had a severe frown on his face, like, <laughs> like he didn't want to be there. He said he was going to be late for work, but I told him he started this mess, and he wasn't leaving without giving me a reasonable answer. Y'all, he looked at me as if I didn't belong there, like I was some kind of stranger that he didn't know how to tell to get out of his house. His nose was t twisted up like I had some kind of stench. Mm -hmm. It was horrible the way he kept looking at me. And then all of a sudden, as if someone took the cork out of his mouth, he said, I want a divorce. Mm -hmm. Then I heard myself pleading and begging while he told me that he didn't want me anymore, mm -hmm. that I was too fat, that I was too stuck on myself, that I spent way too much money, that I this and I that. I wanted to slap that smug look off his face, but I kept begging and he walked out the door. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know, until later was that he left me for his sorry ex-wife Veronica. They were married three years before I met Adonis, but they weren't married, they weren't even married a year before he found her in bed with someone else. Mm. I fell in love with him and we got married two years later. And to think, he want, went back to that stank hole after all these years. <laughs> Okay. X Terminator came out last year, so as Jessica Tillis has said, you know, they generally have a shelf life of a year, but you can still order it on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, so I'm with, I'm with Straper Books, which is the imprint of Simon & Schuster, so you can get it through Simon & Schuster. Um, and for those stores that still have it in their stores, you know, because I, I do have nationwide uh, distribution, um, you know, you can still get it in the stores. But you can go to my website at www.susettaperkins.com <laughs> and I have um, the um, links uh, to uh, actually to my actual site on those uh, particular uh, websites that you can go directly and buy it. And also, I will say that even though I don't really push it as much, but I'm, um, you can also purchase if you like. There's people who like hardcover. So black expressions, um, I don't push it a lot, but um, this book and my second one are available through black expressions. Okay, thank you so much, Susanna. Yeah, thank you. Okay.